I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Why does it start beeping? Twenty twenty one Volkswagen ID four without launch control. Not really that fast. No, not really. Horsepower and torque. 201 horsepower, 229 pound feet of torque from one electric motor powered by an 82 kilowatt hour battery. Just gonna floor it while driving. Nothing spectacular, but it's like good solid power delivery for like scooting around. Yeah, I mean, it's an electric car, so it's still instant. And this is the rear wheel drive version. What is the range? Up to 400 kilometers, which is pretty respectable. And if this was the all wheel drive version, it would have even more horsepower. Yeah, and then it would probably be pretty decent, but that's not coming until the later half of the year. And this is an American model, even though we're driving it in Canada. Yes, this is the American Pro S in rear wheel drive. Form. Okay, and what is the ID4? Why isn't this just an electric golf? So ID is Volkswagen's new electric platform. So there's the ID3, the ID4, the ID Buzz concept. So there are more electric cars coming with the ID name. And that cool dune buggy was based off the ID platform as well. Yes. So they made really cool concepts and then we kind of just ended up with this. Okay. So let's start off by talking about the looks and some of the things we like before we get into talking about all the things we hate because there's a ton of stuff that we really hate about this car. So starting with the look, starting with the front end, we do have really nice headlights, nice daytime running lights. And then we got a line that goes all the way across and the badge lights up when the full headlights are on. Yeah, and you can mostly see it at night. And I do like the headlights, but I don't really like the overall front end just because there's nothing to it. It's just kind of big and flat. It is a simple design and I do kind of like it. But the thing I don't like is that you can't keep your daytime running lights on when you get out of the car to take a photo of it or anything from the front. So I found a hack. You take your tripod, you wedge against the brake pedal, wedge your seat into that. And while the car is on, you have to do this from outside the car because if you do it while you're sitting down and get out, it's going to know you got out and turn it off. And then you can leave the key in here, close the door and take a picture of it from the front with the daytime running lights on. Wow, that's not a hassle at all, Yuri. <laughs> Our job is workarounds, bro. We are like the best quality control people ever. But we do have a grill at the bottom, which is kind of weird for electric cars. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it makes it look a little more normal car. I overall like the simplicity of it. I definitely don't. Under the hood, what's there? Uh, not a frunk. It's just all of our electronics for the motors and stuff. Do you mind? I don't know. I don't really care. I feel like they should have. It's an electric car. I feel like they should utilize the front for frunk space. Yeah. Like well, the Mach-E does. Let us know why, Volkswagen. Okay, from the side, we've got some pretty simple body lines, but there is like a nice chiseled body line along the top. Yeah, and then that silver part at the top is probably the best part of the side, because other than that, it just kind of looks like a blob to me. I like that silver part at the top. I think it's like a really nice body line. And then our wheels are very nice. They remind me of the old Golf R wheels. Yeah, I could see that. They're pretty decent looking wheels. I would say nothing wrong with those, 10 out of 10. And what is a Continental recommended tire for an ID4? The Cross Contact LX Sport. Okay, before we keep going, I want to do a little bit of handling at the cliche corner. Okay, I will shut my mouth for this because I oh. And if, if you go too hard, traction just turns on and completely cuts all the power. See there, I'm floored. Nothing's happening. But it does feel like in certain moments, it is quick through cliche. And I think that once they make a sport version, this can be very quick. Yes, Yuri, potentially. I have the feeling that it can be unlocked. Hey Yuri, can we turn up the fan speed? Getting a little hot today. Hey ID, hello ID, blower speed up. Oh, blower speed. Sorry? Turn up the blower speed. Okay. It turned it off. <laughs> uh, you can talk to this car, but I wouldn't recommend it. Let me get into my... Okay, it's really hot. It's Hold on. really hot now. No, I have to turn it turn up. Turn it on, right here. On. No, that's... Oh, here. Ah. Somebody do a timer of how many seconds my eyes have been off the road. <laughs> Is that good? No, because there's no... There, that's good. Okay. Somebody actually analyzed how long I wasn't looking at the road there. And with my help of turning the system on. We'll talk about that at the second sorry, half of the yeah, video. Yeah, sorry. Okay, from the back end, taillights are great. I think nothing wrong with them at all. Yeah, pretty good looking, except the line across the entire back end, which is going to date the car pretty quickly. But for now, it's really nice. Yes. What I really like is that we have white badges on the back. I don't think anyone's doing that yet. And like, 
compared to chrome like white's a lot cooler. yeah no the, the white badges are definitely cool and it definitely works for an electric car and i do like the new volkswagen logo that has been simplified as well i guess the simplified logo the simplified look at this car it kind of matches and it is a volkswagen now ah, ah. everyone who fell for that you're you're kind of dumb <laughs> no offense i think didn't they get investigated by the sec recently oh my god that's like that's like the best april fool's joke ever that's well the, now the that FCC they're getting invested oh my god like they can't Money no, because they manipulated the stock price. They can money their way out of any problem. We know well, that. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. And what about the exhaust tips, Yuri? There is none because it's an electric car. Let's take a listen to the outside. It's a pretty loud one. Yeah, it is actually. It makes cool spaceship sounds. And this is a hatchback, which would mean it would compete more with the Model Y than the Model 3. So we should probably fold all the seats down and do the box test. Ten boxes. Sorry that we couldn't fit these boxes in. Sorry, not sorry. It's the car's fault. Still less than a Civic, but yep. <laughs> pretty much everything in the world is less than a Civic. And this thing is like actually quite large in person. And then the last thing, the door handles on the side, they are like the Porsche 911 ones, except when you reach under, they don't come out at all. Yeah, and these are way better than the Mach-E's door handles. Yeah, they're overall pretty okay. So overall, looks-wise, you hate it, and I don't mind it. Yeah, I think somebody in a boardroom was like, okay, we need the future and we don't want anyone to know what it looks like so if you had to describe this car in a pass by like you wouldn't know how to describe it i think this is a cool building block for cooler stuff in the future just like how all the m cars are the coolest version and everything below that doesn't look as good they got to start at the bottom and then the designer in that meeting replied i got you fam and he came up with this and then overall driving feel for this for me it kind of just feels like the most appliance point a to point b car with no real excitement in this version. Can we talk about negativity now? Um, yeah, I guess so. Where would you like to start with? Okay, since I'm in the passenger seat, I will not address what you just said, even though that was a 100% correct statement. Uh, number one, the gloss black everywhere in this interior. Yeah, it's kind of disgusting. So let's start with the infotainment. So we've got a tacked on screen, which I think is perfect. I like this style a lot more than the Mach-E. I like that it's raised up and it is horizontal as well. Yeah, it's in your field of view, unlike the Jetta, I think, which was really low down, or was that the GTI? Anyways, we've got icons that are normal. We've got a touch button on the left, which is like your home. But then below that is where everything completely falls apart. We've got these capacitive touch buttons for your temperature and your volume sliders and stuff, they get so gross and dirty, it's disgusting. And you never complain about gloss black. You complain about me complaining about gloss black, but in this car, you hate it. Yeah, I know. This is like, this is like, the I'm, I, uh, uh. it's really bad. There's no actual tactile volume or tuning knobs. Everything is done through the infotainment or your steering wheel, which are also touch buttons. We'll get to that later. But the home button I found because I was like, okay, can I switch between Apple CarPlay and the main screen? So I held the home button. Well, it turns out that's how you enter service mode. Yeah. That's the, such a weird place for service that's mode. That's a dangerous place you for service mode. just bury that in the settings. Exactly. Okay, anyways, that home button is pretty nice though to like, it, it's intuitive. To yes, the it's, home button is the best part like of it. It's like they're trying to copy uh, how like Apple CarPlay works. Exactly. And then as for lag, a little bit here and there, but it's like not the end of the world. It is pretty usable as a touch screen. Yep. Um, what I found was weird was when you go to your radio media, and like you want to go to your Sirius XM stuff, like it's not a normal car where you can just see a whole list of things. It's like the weirdest thing ever. And then I'm like, once I got a song playing, I didn't know how to see what the song was. Then I realized if I put my hand close to it, it shows some stuff up. I swipe from the right to the left, and then I can see all that stuff and rewind. Yeah, so it does have a proximity sensor in it, and you can actually put your finger near stuff and not actually touch certain things on the screen, which is kind of cool, but also kind of weird. And then we do have wireless and wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so it's nice to have those options, so those do work really well. Yeah, it's all USB-C, which I didn't have that cable ready when I got in, but I could connect wirelessly without a cable, which was killer. And then we have a fairly low-res backup camera, considering this is like a 2021 very brand new vehicle. Yeah, it's like, here's the future. Also, we're using crappy old Porsche reverse cameras. And we do have ambient lighting options in the infotainment, and the ambient lighting actually looks pretty cool at night. So I'm driving this thing at night, and this stuff's not even illuminated. And then on the bottom left, if you look, it shows our heated seats and climate. So if you click that, that sends you to a climate screen. That's where you need to adjust all your climate. And we also have some 
black capacitive touch buttons below that as well for more climate, parking stuff, safety assist, and your drive modes. Yeah, so in the climate, we have smart climate, classic climate, and air care. So I guess you go to smart climate if you've never driven a car before because those are like dumbed down versions of everything in classic climate. <laughs> cool feet. <laughs> but you know what though? A it's, lot of people don't funny. know how to defrost the windshield. Really? They don't, they don't know that you have to have like the AC stuff on everything. Well, you probably shouldn't be driving. It, it, it's it's not everyone knows this stuff, you know what I mean? And then, yeah, classic climate, that's where all your normal stuff is, but you gotta go through so many screens to change your climate. It's a straight up hazard. You saw my eyes, I'm not looking at the road. I hate it. Sorry, back to these uh, touch buttons here. When I was using Apple CarPlay, usually I rest my hand here to click stuff. The second I rest my hand here, I start changing my volume and my climate. Yeah, it's, it's really bad. Okay, let's continue talking about how bad this infotainment is with you behind the wheel. I would love to. So when I got out, it made the do 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 And when I got in, I hit my knee on the steering column. Okay, okay. When I got out, it made the do 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 Volkswagen car commercial thing, which made me think I'm in a Volkswagen ad. Which is a little triggering. And you hit your knee on the steering column, which I complained in every other Volkswagen. and. We it's do even, it in this one. It's even worse. They didn't fix it. No, I, they somehow managed to get it into this, which they is actually made impressive. It even worse. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. an electric car where there's no, no like anything actually connected to anything, it's all just like okay, use electronic. Your, use your i3 shifter to get it into yeah. drive. Okay, we'll get to that in a little bit. Why don't you turn traction off for this launch control, Jacob? Let me just press the mode indicator, go into sport mode, and I can't turn off traction control. Uh, brake boost? Oh, <sighs> there's nothing. <laughs> You know, I asked the Volkswagen rep what would happen if I did a neutral drop, and he looked at me like, why would I ever do that? Yeah, I mean, that's a fair question. Should we but do it? Should we do it? Yeah, I might as well try. I mean, <laughs> that, I got nothing out of that. Okay. This is... Uh, oh, I feel bad. What if it breaks it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could break it. You never know. Okay, neutral. Press the brake to select a gear. I, I mean, it was a little bit oh! better. <laughs> That was so bad. Neutral drop. Uh, definitely do not void your warranties and do that. It's definitely not worth the extra, I don't even know, 0.1 second that we got. Okay, so I did have to press the mode button in these capacitive buttons down here, which are not very good as well. And other stuff with this infotainment, since we're still talking about that, but we're gonna stop talking about it very shortly. Uh, you can't see the actual charging rate when you're charging. And I did try to charge this, not at an Electrify Canada network, but I'll get to that later. And it obviously aired out on me in the first 15 seconds of charging one charger, it aired out. Just buy a Tesla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so with this car, you get two or three years of free electric charging in Canada and the United States on the Electrify Canada and the Electrify America network. And let me just show you a map of what the Electrify Canada network looks like. So I hope you enjoy driving between Toronto and Montreal back and forth. <laughs> and maybe to uh, transporting your car across the country on a plane or on a shipping container and then going to Vancouver. Through the settings, we got some electric car stuff but it doesn't really show anything that I can reference. Like, I don't understand what my kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers is. Like in that first Ionic video, I feel like there was something that's like, here's the best, here's what you're getting. And it's like, okay, cool, I can strive. I know I'm not as doing as well as the best can be here. It's like, no idea. It's just numbers, right? Like you have to know numbers. You have to know what a good reference point is. It's like, a, it's like a foreign language to me. Yeah. I mean, we'll get used to it as more electric cars come, but right now it's But still, it's nice to know like the reference of the best that the car can do. Right. Give me those butterflies back. Okay, so sport mode, send into cliche corner, and I'm floored and I'm not going anywhere. This thing's just flashing traction at me, flashing again. Like, I mean, there's some body roll, it's not horrible, but there's just no power. It's just completely cut. I'm flat to the floor. Yeah. And it's rear wheel drive. You just gotta not, it's not, it's not for that. And the thing is, Volkswagen is so proud that this is their first rear wheel drive in decades, and it can't do a burnout, it can't do anything fun. With, come on. No, I know, but Don't like, be proud of that I, fact I, yeah, they, if they, it can't do anything with that fact. No, I get that. I 100% get that. But bonus points for this because the steering is actually quite lovely, I would say. Like, it's it's communicative. It's it's good. There's going. There's potential for fast handling. Uh, there's potential for everything, but I don't, I don't see it in this. Do a burnout. Oh, did that back end go out there? Dude. <laughs> for half a second. Jeez. Okay, so hit me with those charge times. Okay, so on a level two charger, this can charge in about seven and a half hours. And how about level three? Okay, level three gets a little bit crazy. So from 5% to 80%, it can charge in exactly 38 minutes, which is very specific. Now, I don't know the range at 80% because they give the range from 100% because I ranted about that in the Mach-E video. Wait, 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 80 times four will be... 
320 kilometers? Yeah, something like that sounds about right. Is that some quick maths? Yeah, that's right. And the crazy stuff is from 5% to 35% is when you're supposed to get 125 kilowatts if the charger can supply it and if it's working correctly. After 35%, it starts to slow down the battery. So in 10 minutes, you can get about 100 kilometers of charge if you're at the optimal battery percentage and the charger is again working properly, which in our experience hasn't really worked properly ever. Yeah. Like literally, <laughs> the <laughs> only- Unless you're in a Tesla. <laughs> exactly, the only time we've had an electric car charged properly has been with a Tesla. Well, no, I mean, the only time we haven't had issues. Yes, exactly. But the, the Smart for two, I think that had no issues, but it had like no range. I think we got lucky that time, but yes. And then I think the BMW i3 also had no issues, but also had like no range. Uh, we had a check engine light on that car, Yuri. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that did have an engine though. It had a, had a True. generator, so yeah, maybe yeah. it was that. Yeah. <laughs> and actual power-wise, floor it, it's not very quick. You do get the instant response, hence being electric, but it feels like the old Golf, if not even slower. And the first Hyundai Ionic that we drove, I believe also had about 201 horsepower. So this doesn't feel as fast as it should for modern electric cars. But, but that you could turn off traction to like front wheel peel. I know. Anyway, I don't know, it feels, it feels nice for cruising around town. Yes. Adequate, it feels adequate. Yes, for grocery trips, this is perfect. But in defense of the whole, not that dynamic grocery getter thing, if you drive like a Mustang daily or like a 911 daily, sometimes you go a little too fast all the time and like you can't slow yourself down. Right. If you needed a car for slowing yourself down, this would be a good option because you're kind of forced to not go fast. Yuri, this would be the best option on the market that I remember driving ever. <laughs> uh, some more stuff that we forgot to talk about earlier are steering wheel buttons. They are piano black. They are capacitive touch. They are tricky to use, but like the feedback is nice. And then you can use view here to go through your view on your inf on your gauge cluster screen, which is attached to your steering column. Wow, which, the, the, that button was definitely necessary. <laughs> like there's, the, the view barely changes. Yeah, but you can see your lane keep assist and stuff, and this does have really decent lane keep assist. It does, and adaptive cruise as well. And we do have this gauge cluster, which is attached to the steering column, just like it was in the BMW i3, and you also change the drive modes, just like you did okay. in the BMW okay, i3. Yeah, try to go through cliche corner without triggering the the traction control. Okay. Like half throttle stuff. Okay, I'm off the throttle because that's what I know I need. Oh, I triggered it. Dude, okay, I, okay. I was keep going trying, straight Keep though. trying, keep trying, keep trying. Okay. Like see. It, nope, it triggered. But you, you, this is still feels good. Not triggered. This still felt pretty decent. Maybe to you. It's, <laughs> there's potential there. Anyways. I would rather send a Hyundai Palisade through there than this. Okay, and now I'm going to put on brake regeneration slowing down, which is nice to see in the gauge cluster, which shows you at the bottom with the green and the blue. Yeah, except there's but still no percentage, just your kilometers left. And it's not as aggressive as like real one pedal driving, but it does come to a stop. Yeah, it's like a, a good introduction to one pedal driving. Yes, so let's put that back into drive. So another thing that I was worried about in this car is when you get out of the car, it seems to turn off a lot. Let's come to a stop, pretend like I'm your wife holding your child, okay. and you need to run into the store and come back. The key is in the car still right here, and I want you to keep the air conditioning on. Okay, so I put it in park, and I'm just going to leave because the AC is currently running. Yes. I'm going to open the door, and everything just turned off. Okay, so close the door. Okay, so you have to figure out, as my wife, how to turn this all on. Okay, power button. Is it working? It's working, but why did it shut off when you got out? If I don't I'm know. still in here. It's definitely not, well. Yeah, no, air, air's going. Okay. But why did it turn off? I don't know. When you got out. That's what this car does every time I'm you get out. I'm still in here though. The, I, there's some kind of sensor on the seat or somewhere here that detects when the driver leaves, even though the key's in it. Yeah. Anyways. I should probably point out this car is kind of designed to just open and put your foot on the brake and then it'll start. You don't necessarily need to push this button anytime. See, and it's ready. Put it in drive, good to go. Open the door, get out, and it'll turn off. So that's probably part of that. Another thing I just found out, so say you're reversing it in your driveway, you didn't put your seatbelt on, whatever. You're going back, it's fine, but say you wanna lift your butt up to get a better look behind you. The car shuts off because it thinks you got out of the seat. 
And then another cool thing, this has a line that goes right underneath the whole windshield. So say you're coming up on a car too fast, it'll show it all red and give you your like collision warning. Yeah, or if you say hello ID, it'll show it to whoever's saying that in front of them. Oh, uh, more fun stuff that this does, we have a assist button. So when you click on that, there's a picture for all your driving assist stuff instead of a list. Yeah, so if you didn't know what to do with this, you just think you're staring at a picture of lovely looking cars. Yeah, and I'm sure this is going to be a lot of people's first car who don't know about lane keep assist and assistance settings. So if I click on this car, it's like, oh, here's a guess. You know, well, it kind of lights it up, but like, it's weird. If I click on the sign, then it'll like allow my speed warning. But, but then, but the sign isn't blue like everything else that you can click yeah, right now. Yeah, and then when you click on something, it goes unblue. But there's this little button at the top right to give you a whole list when you're parked, which is good. But it's just like, like yeah. weird stuff. Like, are we that stupid that we need pictures to be like, oh, that's a car in front. I don't want to hit that. Like, that's what I'm saying with the smart climate. Like, it's like they're trying to dumb the car down, but at the same time, they're making it all really difficult to use. Yeah, 100%. Like, they just went to future. Speaking of to future, okay, so we have two buttons for the actual windows to put them up or down. Yuri, how do we get the back ones down? You click the rear button, and then you can do the rear windows with the same switches. False. You click and hold the rear just for a split second, because if you click it, nothing happens. You have to hold it for a split second, and now I can adjust the rear. And then click and hold, and now I can do the fronts again. Like, overly complicated for no reason, and I should mention that all of that is also gloss black. Well, the switch part isn't, but everything else around it. Yeah, yeah so I'm resting my hand. To be yeah, yeah dude, it. like my leg is leaving like the nastiest stuff on this piano black right now. Guys, what is your obsession with gloss black at Volkswagen and every other manufacturer that's doing this? Yeah, sorry this is getting uh, a little negative, but like we, we have offered to be uh, qual quality control people and like user interface testers for companies for free. You guys just didn't take up the offer. Yeah, and also I'm not sorry because this is the kind of stuff that Volkswagen needs to hear because there are other competitors to this car that are doing a lot of things better. We recently drove the Mustang Mach-E and that does so many things better than this. This does certain things better than that, but overall I think that is the better car between both of these. More interior stuff. We've got cup holders here and you can pull this whole panel out. They fit well for a small cup of coffee. And then we got this kind of cup holder thing, just like Tesla Model S's here as well. We've got our wireless charging tray, which is a good spot, and our USB-C right below that. And what about our visors, Yuri? Three, two, one. Yes. You know we'll what? Pass. The car's saved. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> and they didn't fly off, so that's good. Okay. Uh, this moonroof, and we can close the shade by sliding forward. Of, with a of course. A little piano black swoop. Because you, you can't, yeah, you can't press it. You got to slide your finger. Can we press it? No. No, it's got to slide. Okay, now moving on to these seats. They look cool. They're white. They say ID on them, and they are very, very comfortable. Yeah, extra comfortable, super well padded. I really like sitting in these seats. You could definitely do a road trip in these seats. And in the back, you could hey, also hey, do a... Hey, I forgot about the massage, bro. Oh, sorry, yeah. So there is actually a massage in this package that we have. But I feel like it's just like the lumbar going in and out. So yeah, it's, like, eh. it's not very good, but we do have it, so that's nice. And then in the back, there's actually quite a bit of leg room and headroom for myself at six foot one and a half. Yeah, there's a lot back there. And then uh, we already did the box test. Yeah. Oh. Armrests. Yes, super well padded. And, love it. And like, there's a little button here so you can ratchet it to wherever you want. Yeah. I freaking love armrests. Minivans have them. My Honda Element has them. My Fiat Abarth has them, even though I don't use them in that car because it's a manual. Yeah, this is definitely like a minivan kind of style. Like having armrests, like that's the that's the best thing you guys ever did, Volkswagen. This is so much better than like the GTI handle that slides up. Yes. So I think that's kind of everything with the ID4. That's definitely everything I'd like to get into with this car, Yuri. Let's get to the price. So this is an American car, but for the Canadian spec version of this, it starts at $44,995. Canadian. And this one with the statement package is $52,995. So this is very comparable to an American model, but we do have a heat pump in the Canadian version and a heated windshield as well. Oh yeah, and all the Americans who live in Minnesota are gonna be like, what the heck, why don't we get that? And all the Americans who live in Arizona would be like, we never seen snow in our life and we don't care. Yeah, so I think, well, okay, so an Arizona joke, I got it, sorry, yeah, yeah. So you can blame uh, California and stuff for not getting uh, heated windshields and things in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do a Minnesota accent, but it's like, I don't know. How it, it, you just gotta say Fargo. Yeah. All I know is Fargo. It's just like well, a weird Canadian. Would you believe we're not getting the heated no, windshield that's here? that's not it. We do believe we're not getting the heated windshield, though, don't you know? <laughs> don't you know? Don't you know? We should be getting the heated windshield in the seats up here in Minnesota. There you go. Yeah, you maybe got a uh, little. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, Coach Bombay's leading the Ducks to another championship up here in Minnesota. So this costs less than a comparable Tesla, but I think you get a lot more with a Tesla. Yeah, you definitely do. I think this is a cool first attempt. Um, I think some people are going to really like it. I think that anyone who puts like touch buttons instead of climate buttons, that's like going to be a straight pipes from now on. Do not like, do not care, hate, 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 hate. Yeah, and the thing is they're going to say that, well, we also have voice controls, which is where the future's going with natural language. But 99% of the time, it fails on us. Yeah, uh, honestly, hard buttons, knobs and stuff, please, anything that from now on we are going to be upset about. Yeah, so if you made it through this far and, into and the video. black. So if you made it through, yeah, this far into the video and you haven't yet subscribed for our very honest reviews where who knows if we're ever going to drive another Volkswagen, uh, let us know in the comments what you think of this car. You know what, the comments are just going to say we're paid by Tesla yeah. to say something bad. But like, oh, Tesla doesn't even have a PR department. They won't even give us cars. Yeah. So like, we're just being honest. Exactly. And I do like the Mach-E more than this car as well, which is not a Tesla. Uh, I think I'm like pretty similar on the two cars. Like, like the Mach-E was more fun. It also got more range. I don't, we have, did, I don't want to have fun in that car. It's not I, fun I, enough I, to I have get fun it. in. But we did drive the all-wheel drive version, and I think it did a lot of things better on the interior as well. So, And I think it looks cooler as well. Uh, I think this is debatably as cool as that. And it's, what? And it's not like they called it the GTIE. It's its own thing. So I think major points for the Volkswagen. Dude, nobody is going to call this cool. I think it looks cool. I think it's simple. It's a simple design, but I think it's cool. Okay, let us know in the comments if you guys think this design is cool if you're on Team Yuri or if you think this design is the opposite of cool if you're on Team Jacob. Let us know. Uh, Model Y versus the ID4. Mach-E versus the ID4. Pretty much all your comments and are our rants going too far? Yeah, let us know. Electric cars, they bring out the rants in the straight pipes. I mean, these companies are trying to do weird stuff that they shouldn't try to do. Exactly. But like, there's a lot of cool things. It's just gonna get worse. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, there's some things that are cool, some things that I hate. I like the, I, I, I legitimately like the looks of this. There's nothing in this car that it, it does better than any other car that's available. Nothing. Uh, armrests. The armrests are better than a lot of cars. Okay. Uh, the headlights, I think, are better than a lot of cars, too. I think looks-wise, this does look as good, if not better, than a bunch of cars. The visors extend. <laughs> Seats a lot, back seat room. Dynamically, this does everything worse than every other car I've ever driven. Yeah, even, but, even the Smart for 2 was But better. people who aren't buying this for dynamics, it'll be fine. A lot of people don't care about dynamics. Right. right. Comfort suspension is actually quite good. It's good, but yeah, yeah. It's better than the Mach-E, because that was, like, bouncy. This is less bouncy. Yeah. I mean, there are... Yeah, can't even do a burnout. First electric car in 40 million years. I can't do anything. You mean rear wheel drive? Yeah.